If you can't fail because there is a lesson to be learned in everything, then there's no reason to not try things for a fear of failure. Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Pursuit. Glad to have you here. Feeling extremely motivated and excited about today's episode, but just about kind of where I'm going and what's going on. And I'm going to kind of share some insight with that and then get today's topic. So today's title, as you see, is called Failure is Not an Option. I just thought of that as I sat down, as I think about the second part of my talk today. But I want to welcome all of you returning. also want to welcome all of the new listeners here. Uh, again, I check metrics every so often, but I'm seeing a few more listeners from week to week, which hopefully means we have a few new people joining us that are benefiting or learning from these conversations about pursuing our passions, creating a life centered around them, and just really creating the life that we want to live. That's what I really want this podcast to be about. It's what I'm all about. That's what I'm excited about. And as you're going to see in the coming months, making changes uh, in my life to pour more into this and spend more time doing it, because this is my passion. Um, but we'll get more of that in the future. So I do want to start off with two books I want to just put out there. One of them I'm just going to show you and tell you about. And then the other one I'm going to do a little bit of reading from. I hate reading, but I think these passages are really good. So if you have not been following me on Twitter, at Just10Costelli is my handle, jus one zero. C-A-S-T-E-L-L-I. I'm sure Tyler dropped that at the beginning of this video so you could see that as well. But I talked about the book called The Alchemist. I'll give you a little bit of background into it. But I read this book at the exact moment that I was supposed to to keep me going more and more on my personal pursuit, pursuit and pouring more into this. So the uh, short of the story is I actually ordered this book maybe three or four years ago. And to be honest with you, I don't remember exactly how it came across my radar. I think it was an interview with Jay Shetty and Kobe Bryant. Interestingly enough, it was the interview with Jay Shetty and Kobe Bryant that I rewatched maybe two weeks ago that prompted me to want to read the book again. So three or four years ago, I'm watching the interview. I'm pretty sure that's it. Kobe says The Alchemist is his favorite book. So if Kobe says it's his favorite book, I want to go check it out. I order it. I remember getting a little bit into it and then putting it down, never picking it up. Didn't really speak to me at the moment, so I just moved on to another book and other things. Fast forward to now, I know I have the book somewhere. I couldn't find it, so I ordered another one from Amazon. It comes. Naturally, I find the other copy. The other copy, if you can see, on if you watch this on YouTube, the, the cover kind of folds out. I used that to mark my spot instead of having a bookmark, and it was like at page 9 or 10. So I didn't get very far into the book. Over the years, between first buying it and now reading it in a couple days this year, I had other people mention the book. I actually had people tell me that I reminded them of the main character and just never really dove into it. So I begin reading it and immediately get hooked. The book is talking about personal legends. Um, they're talk, it's talking about omens, signs. Personal legend is pursuit. Um, and all these things that I have been talking about or thinking about and ultimately, as I read the book, the main character, Santiago, it's, you know, it's me. And it sounds a little egotistical to think that I could be the person in the book, but I am totally the person in the book going on this journey, going down different paths, allowing my passion and my heart to guide where I'm going and trusting that everything is going to work out. And it always has. So I have no reason not to trust uh, the path that I go down. So I, I really enjoyed this book. I fully believe that the reason I didn't read it in the past was because I wasn't ready to read it. The reason I was ready to read it now is some of the things that I have learned, conversations I've had, things I have been made aware of to where when I read this, it really resonated more. It talks about the language of nature and of the desert, uh, which is kind of like the universe talking to us. Like So many things in this book really hit home with me that I just want more people to know about it. And interestingly enough, I shared with it publicly how much I love the book. And a bunch of people that I know that are in my circle have read it in the past or are reading it now. And I'm going to have a couple conversations on the podcast with some of those, Dr. Cherry being one of them. Uh, he mentioned he's a, another financial advisor, a leader in our space. He mentioned he's read it a couple times. He was going to reread it. And then we're going to compare notes, just have a conversation about the book. But I marked this book up like crazy. And I'm going to go back and reread it and mark it up some more, and then try to create some content around it, taking what, what the author of The Alchemist wrote 
and put it into my words and how I relate it to today's time and to my life, which maybe relates to yours. But The Alchemist is an amazing book. I have a handful of copies left over. I mentioned that I had the extra one and I was willing to send that to somebody on my dime. And I had a bunch of people reach out saying that if the copy was still around, they would love it. And instead of telling them, sorry, too late, I went out to Amazon about 20 copies to give away. I love giving away books, especially if they mean a lot to me. And I think that the individuals who have reached out, a lot of them I don't know. They're not anonymous accounts, but they're not people that I know. Uh, they just happen to follow me on, on social media. I believe that they reached out to somebody they don't really know because this book is supposed to find its way to them. Uh, my trainer, Franklin, shout out to Franklin. I gave him a copy of the book and he tweeted at me last night that um, he had in his in his feed 10 things to take away from The Alchemist. Now, that could have been because we were talking about it and his phone picked it up. We know how the phone kind of does those sketchy things and it's a coincidence, but I'm beginning to believe less and less in coincidences that things happen for a reason. So maybe there was some doubt in his mind about reading the book. Maybe he was going to put it down and wait for a later time. But then social media let him know, no, Franklin, now is the time to read it. So I thought that was a pretty cool moment. So The Alchemist. Now it brings me to the next book I'm reading. And I started this last night. I'll probably finish it tonight. Uh, it's called The Lion Tracker's Guide to Life uh, by Boyd Vardy. Now, Boyd Vardy is somebody that I've heard of um, and have followed for a little while. He was on Patrick O'Shaughnessy's Invest Like the Best podcast. I'll try to find it and put it in the show notes. And But Boyd comes from a family of lion trackers from South Africa. His family tracked li lions for years, and now they have a business doing it. And I, after hearing him on Patrick's podcast, one, I was fascinated by the story and his view on life, but I want to go on the trip that he puts on where you camp for a few nights, but one of the nights you actually sleep in the wild, not in a tent, open, people take turns to keeping guard to protect the camp, and you're just in the wild in Africa. That is so outside of me, my comfort zone. I'm not a big nature guy. I don't camp. Uh, the thought of being in Africa, camping without even a tent, uh, does not it might be something I would think I would want to do, but I, I want to do it so bad. I know it's an expensive trip, but it is one that's going to be a bucket item for me, and I plan to make that a reality. Uh, but anyways, back to the book. A client of mine, shout out to Michael, recommended this book to me, and I bought it on his recommendation and began to read it last night. And in it, there were a lot of similarities to The Alchemist, to what Boyd has learned as a tracker or has experienced and seen other trackers uh, that comes from being out in nature and the life that they live. Now, it's very well possible that he read The Alchemist and was able to take some of those concepts and put it into his own words and his own story, but I don't think that's the case. I think that there is this universal, um, there are these universal laws, there are these universal things that are out there that a lot of people miss and some people pick up on, and the people who pick up on them are able to use them to their advantage. So I want to read a couple passages from here real quick. I, I know that it's lame. Uh, but I want to read these to you and just have a couple comments, and then we'll get into why failure is not an option. So this is almost like a, a double episode. But in this, again, going back to similarities that the alchemist um, talks about, you know, the signs of, of nature, talks about the language of the nature, very similar to some things that were going on in the alchemist. But Boyd is talking about you know, information coming from nature. He said, I would come to realize that becoming aware of such information and the feelings it evokes the people who are important to you, the things that bring you life, the arrival of something meaningful is in its own kind of consciousness, track awareness. You can easily miss this information if you don't know how to see. Track awareness is how attuned you are to what it is around you. It is recognizing a track when it appears. It is teaching yourself how to see what is important to you. Now he's talking about tracks with animal tracks and finding lions and other animals in Africa. But you can replace that with just your life, the things that are important to you the people that are important to you, that's the passions, the people you should be building your life around, the things that you should be building your life around, the things that you are actively going after in your pursuit. Um, for me, it's very encouraging to see these concepts in books like The Alchemist and in Boyd's book because imposter syndrome gets the best of all of us. And here I am, a financial advisor who has a great life. I, I feel I've built a good practice. I have a great family life. I have a good balance. Uh, but who am I to talk about these concepts versus someone like Boyd Vardy, who's a, a coach and a TED Talker and has been tracking animals for years and has this this knowledge, or Jay Shetty, another fan of, uh, another person I'm a fan of. He was a monk for all intents and purposes. Like, how do I compare them? And what I realize is like everybody has access to this information and these understandings. Not everybody 
sees it. Not everybody slows down enough to see it. Not everybody understands that it's there. I have the same understanding that they do. I have different life experiences. I have a different way of sharing that story. And I have different views on the same thing. We might be believing in the same overall philosophy, but there might be some differences in the way that we go about explaining it or even the way we believe it. So we all are able to tell this story different ways. So I don't think I need to read too many more books of these to give me the confidence to go beyond these podcasts and talk about it even more. Uh, but I'd be lying if these don't bring me confidence because I'm seeing the ideas and thoughts that I've come to, not on my own, but that are my thoughts that I have um, through my own research and conversations and life experiences. Seeing me in a book like this gives me a lot of confidence. I'm going in the right direction and that I should be spending more time talking about this. All right, back to the book real quick. The idea that life is full of information. You must train yourself to see what you're looking for. Signs. We've talked about signs before. That New York City spray paint sign. Signs are there. The 36 lines that make up the circle behind my head and the logo of RLS Wealth and the main logo for Pursuit. Those are signs and you have to be able to be aware to see. They have to believe in them and, and be looking for them. You can't think of your way to a calling. So your purpose. You can't think of your way there. Finding what is uniquely yours requires more than rationality. You have to learn how your body speaks. You have to learn how you know what you know. You have to follow the inner tracks of your feelings, sensations, and instincts, the integrity and truth that are deeper than ideas about what you should do. You have to learn to follow a deeper, wiser, wilder place inside yourself. And finally, inside each of us is a natural innate knowledge of why we are here. Tracking is a function of dis directing attention, bringing our awareness back to subtle inner trail of the wild self and learning to see its path. Yet most of us have so much of the social conditioning of modern life that the track of the wild self has been lost. Social cues of our culture. We look to others to define our path and value and purpose. We lose ourselves in shoulds. Shoulds are full of traps. Traps laid by society and limited rules for yourself. No one can tell you what your track will be or how to know what calls you and brings you to life. That's your work to do. But a great tracker can ask, how do you know you love something? How do you feel when you are fully expressing yourself? Learn that feeling and then start looking, not for the thing, but for the feeling. So much in there we've talked about already on this podcast. Being limited by others, trying to live up to the expectations of others, limiting ourselves because we see other people doing things that, that you know we think we should be doing or not be doing. And then just the concept of listening to ourselves, your heart, whatever it is, your passions, we can all define it a different way, but internally we know what makes us happiest. We know what it is that we want to be doing over other things, but a lot of us tune it out and don't follow it. So uh, again, I wanted to share those. I marked those up in my book. Uh, they gave me a lot of confidence, again, to continue down these conversations. I just wanted to put those thoughts on your radar and let you think on those and meditate on those uh, and, and let them be what they might be. And that those are on page 29 and 30 of this book. So you don't have to get very far in to get a lot of value out of it. So that, that was the intro to today's episode. Now let's get to, to failure. And I don't think we'll hammer home on this very long since we spent time on the books, but um, I have in the show notes, and Tyler, I'll have you flash this up, this tweet from Jack Butcher. Actually, I'm looking at it on LinkedIn, but Jack Butcher is somebody I'm a big fan of. He's an amazing creator, a very good, um, not, good is not good enough. He's an, you know, a brilliant thinker and almost kind of like philosopher in some extent. And the, the post that he had said, publishing your ideas is like building a portfolio of early stage investments. Lots of them will amount to nothing. Some will do okay, and a few will generate the majority of returns. And this is the sentence I really want to focus on. You remember your losers, but no one else will. That's why they lost. And while where I want to go with this is not with investing and not building a portfolio, not even so much with losers, but more on the concept of failing, um, you remember your losers, but no one else will. And if no one else really remembers them, is it really a loss? And I attribute loss to failure which is why the conversation for today is failure is not an option. So I don't think we ever fail. Um, with every quote-unquote failure or loss, there are lessons to be learned. And we all have different definitions of failing. Uh, failing could be you know, getting an F on a test growing up in, in high school or middle school. You know, You got that F that showed that you failed, but there still was a lesson in that. The lesson was the preparation that you took was not what you need to do to, to, to get a better grade, to have a better understanding. Or the what you thought you understood, you didn't know. There's a lesson there. The feedback from the test is not that you're dumb. It's that there was a disconnect somewhere. 
It's that you didn't prepare the right way, or maybe you didn't study at all, or maybe you have a misunderstanding of it, even the studying that you did was leading you down a different path, or maybe you just prepared totally in the wrong way as it is. Um, so you can let that F you know, get you down and hold you back, or you can realize, okay, this is giving me feedback. It, yes, it's a failure in the, in the letters of A through F, but it's not a failure in life. I'm learning a lesson from this so that the next time I have a test, I know a better way to prepare. Or I know the areas on this subject that I need to spend more time on and learn so that I grow and become wiser and smarter and, and, and know more. So even when you go back to, to school, Fs aren't failures, it's feedback. We, lo- we let that be a failure. We let that tell us that we're not smart. We let that tell us we can't do things. And that maybe that is a failure, but I wouldn't define that a failure. I just define that as a fault. Uh, but that's not a failure. As we get into our professional lives, and I'm going to talk about professional, but you know, there's opportunities to view things as failure across the board. But I look at, again, I can only lead from my story. I look at all of the pivots that I have done in my career, especially since starting my own firm. And I have them listed down to make sure I hit on them. And I don't view these as failures because they didn't amount to new businesses or maybe I didn't have a lot of people um, buy whatever it is that I was selling. But there were things that I felt like I needed to explore. And for me, and I don't think this is everybody, but for me, when I have a interest that I need to explore, I have to explore it. I can't not see what it's like to do X, Y, or Z. Now, X, Y, or Z may be short-lived, and it may look like that I'm all over the place, and maybe at times I am, but I have to know what that experience is like to determine if I need to be doing more of that. I can't just think through it. I have to actually experience it. So example being... Uh, for a time period, I wanted to consult with financial advisors. I was going to stop growing RLS Wealth, turn more of my time to helping my peers. And I would love to do that. And I passively tried to do it and, and had a couple clients, a couple advisors I worked with one-on-one, and they were paying me a subscription. But then ultimately, that didn't light me up as much as I thought. I love having conversations with advisors. I love brainstorming. I love talking shop. Uh, but I didn't necessarily want to turn it into a business. Uh, because then it, be, it lost some of its its fun. So I pulled back from doing consulting. Again, had a couple, did a couple one-on-one hourly sessions with advisors, and, and that was it. And you could look at it and say, well, the reason you quit doing that is because you weren't able to turn it into a business. You didn't have a lot of people wanting to pay you a lot of money. And that is true, but that wasn't why I did it. I explored it, I saw what it was like, and I realized I didn't want to pour in the energy and time and money to take that to the next level. It was an experimentation. Do I like this and is it worth spending more time on it? No, let's pivot back. No harm lost. Um, I helped a couple advisors. I learned some things, um, made a little bit of money, but that wasn't the big motivation behind it at that point. It was just now I know that that's not the path I want to go down. Um, I started to shape my business to work with entrepreneurs. I launched a blog and a podcast called The Entrepreneur's Blueprint. Love talking to entrepreneurs. Would love working with entrepreneurs, but then kind of saw this opportunity to build a community for financial advisors who are entrepreneurial in their spirits and realized that was the entrepreneur I was supposed to go with. So I closed the blog. I closed the podcast. Again, people on the outside might look at that as a failure. Oh, not enough people were listening. Not enough people were were reading. So he shut it down. That wasn't the reason for shutting it down. I had to pursue working with entrepreneurs to see, is that what I want to do? Do I want to pour more time and energy into it? And there's a long list. Going back to advisors, I have a newsletter I started up. Um, I've, I've participated in a startup and we'll be pulling back from that next month and not doing that anymore. I I have to experience these things that catch my attention to see, is it more than just an interest? And a lot of times they are just interest. I don't think we have lots of passions. I think we have a lot of things that catch our interest, things that we want to give a try. Maybe they want to be a small part of our life, but they're not something that would, would be great enough or passionate enough to really make a big change in our life. So for me, exploring and pivoting is not a failure. It is part of the process. It's part of figuring out what it is that I want to do. And then I can say, all right, I did that. Not what I want to do. I can move that off the plate. Versus for me, if I never do it, I'm always going to wonder. And I talk about minimizing regret. Regret doesn't always have to be, I wish I would have done this one thing, or I wish I would have made this purchase or took that trip or you know, had that relationship. It could also be, I wish I would have known, could I have done that? Would I have wanted to do that? I never gave it a try. There's no reason not to try. There's a little bit of investment in it, but a lot of these things we can try on a small, small scale to see is it something worth going deeper into? Is it worth more of our time and energy? And then make a bigger effort at it. But there's never, failure is not an option because you can't fail. 
everything that you do that might not work out the way you want it to, there's a lesson in there. It's an educational moment. Failure means you got nothing out of it. Every, everything bad that has happened in your life, there is something that you can take away from it to help you further your, your progression, further your growth, avoid something in the next time. There's a lesson in everything. And if there's a lesson to be learned, then it's not a failure. It may not be a fun lesson. It may not be fully enjoyable, but there's an opportunity for growth and to get better in everything, which again is why failure is not, not an option. Okay. So I've, I don't think I have to spend much more time on this, this concept of how failure is not an option. Um, I hit everything I wanted to say, so we can leave it at that point. I just, I want to encourage you to not let that fear of failure keep you from pursuing things in your life that might make you happier. If you know that you're not going to fail, that worst case scenario, you're going to have a learning opportunity and maybe there is a setback. Again, we're going to learn from it. And if you go into whatever it is you're pursuing with a little bit of a game plan and some preparation ahead of time, you should know what the setbacks could be, best case, worst case, so you can prepare for it. But don't let the fear of failure hold you back from creating a better life, from trying something that you might be, might be outside of your, your comfort level, might be something new. You're not going to fail. If at anything, you're going to realize it wasn't something that was as important to you. Or you're going to learn from it. Or, or you might realize that that was the thing you were supposed to be doing. But if you're afraid to fail, you're not going to give it a try. Remove fail from your, from your vocabulary. Realize that you cannot fail. That is a lesson in everything. And you will be able to try things that maybe you, you should be trying that you wouldn't have otherwise. So I don't think I ended that as eloquently as I would like to, but you get the point. If you can't fail because there's a lesson in everything, then you should never not try something for fear of failure. There may be other reasons not to do it, but failure and being afraid to fail should not be a reason to avoid trying something new. And I don't also, I'm not going to say you should be excited to fail. Like, it stinks when that happens. And even when it's a pivot, you, know, you get excited about an idea and you, you pull back on it. You know, it's kind of a bummer. Like, what could I have done with that time? But again, there's lessons to be learned along the way. Um, and only you are going to know what those lessons are. Being able to listen to yourself and, and understand you is important, as Boyd talked about in a couple of those um, sections of the readings I did. So there's the connection there. And I would also just say that also be prepared for feedback from people. We've had a couple episodes where we you know talked about not worrying about what other people think, but you will have people who try to tell you, don't try this. Don't try all of these things. Stay on this one path. You have it so good. If you feel called to go try something, you have to go try it. They're not going to understand that. Not everybody has that. Some people are comfortable on the path they're on. And there's nothing wrong with that. And those aren't the people who are going to be listening to my podcast because that doesn't, what we talk about doesn't resonate with them. But you're going to have people who might make fun of you for changing your mind or having all these ideas and saying you're going to do one thing and, and then in the next year or two, you do something else. You just have to be okay with that and just realize that, well, when I originally said this is what I want to do, I believed it. And now that I experienced it, it wasn't what I thought it was. And now there's a new thing that's calling me. I have to explore that. It's a lot like what goes on inside of The Alchemist. So read that book. And I think this episode will make a little bit more sense as well. But my final thought is, if you can't fail because there is a lesson to be learned in everything, then there's no reason to not try things for a fear of failure. Take that off of your excuse list and find another one. But better yet, have no excuses for it. Uh, give it a try. So hope that resonates with some of you out there. I've got some extra uh, cop epi uh, copies of The Alchemist. So if you're listening and you want a copy, uh, shoot me a DM on Twitter. Uh, you shoot me an email at jc at justincastelli.io. Let me know you want a copy. I'll get your address. I'll drop it in the mail to you on me uh, because I think it's that powerful of a book. And if you feel the need to ask for it, then there's a reason for you to read it. You're going to read it and get a lot out of it. Some of the people who ask for it, I know that they need to read this book right now just because I have an idea of what's going on in their life. And for me, that's exciting. You know, I've got this message that I want to share, this I, these concepts I want more people to understand and ultimately help people live better lives. But I also know that I can't do it all on my own. And sometimes it's just exposing people to ideas and concepts or books at the right time to help them on their journey. To me, that's just as valuable and just as meaningful 
as being the original thought leader and thought idea person that puts a new idea in your head. It doesn't have to be me. I can be the vessel that brings an idea to you to help you along your way. I'm perfectly content doing that as well. So read The Alchemist. If you want a copy, hit me up. I'll send you one. And then also, when you get done reading that, read The Lion's Tracker Guide to Life. I'm not even finished with it, but I'm already going to recommend it. It's that good. So with that, appreciate you coming back. Appreciate you uh, sharing these podcasts because I know the audience is growing and uh, hopefully you feel the, the, the need or feel compelled to share it. So thank you in advance for that. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the podcast. If you're on the podcast, head on over to YouTube because sometimes these episodes have bonus content like last week's episode uh, had some extra videos in there that I thought were really compelling uh, to go in. I picked them out ahead of time, but the editing for the video happens after the podcast so they don't make it in. So be sure to check the YouTube channel as well as more content's going to be showing up there. So with that, have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in, and let's keep on this pursuit together. I need to come up with a good ending. It's got to have pursuit in it, but I haven't found something that I want. Uh, let's keep on this pursuit. doesn't get me excited. But for this week, I'm going to end with that. Thanks for tuning in, and let's keep on this pursuit.